Thriller with Nicolas Cage. Funny thing about this video, it was supposed to come out like a month ago, I think, but then I didn't have enough time to do it. And so now it's pushed back into late June, early July, I think is where it's at. But now I'm doing it now, starting with Red Rock West. Now, based off of the title, I was like, is it gonna be like a Western, like a Western thriller? Cause I don't know about that, but no, it's about Nick Cage traveling really far to get a job because he needs money. Turns out he doesn't get that job, but along the way, he gets mistaken for a hitman. And so whenever he's doing his job is, you know what? I'll take it. I don't know what it is, but thank you. And then realizes he is just way in over his head. He's in the wrong place, wrong time. He needs to get out. I just love that this is all just a big misunderstanding, a big mistake by the bartender and Cage himself, but he really needs the money. And so he takes it either way. He meets this girl named Suzanne, which is in the target. I think the target's her boyfriend or husband. It's either that or her. But along the way, they, you know, have a bond. But then that would turn out to be nothing because by the end, she's also a conniving little shithead as well because she wants to betray Cage for her own gain for all of this money. In the end, it's the opposite. He throws all the money away. She wants to take it. She takes it. So now that cops are at her, they can arrest her while Cage is left free to go. And he's like, you know what? I don't care about that money. But still kept a little bit, which I thought was funny. He's doing this because he doesn't want to get caught and wants Suzanne to get caught. But also is like, I'll take a couple because I need money. I'm broke. And so within, I guess a day, this whole movie takes place within like 24 hours. So within that time frame, well, I guess if you count like the days that he drove here, then sure, like a couple of days. But within this time frame, he was offered a job, didn't get that job, offered another job. That was a mistake. Met some real shady ass people. Met this lady who's also pretty much gonna stab him in the back, probably killed some person and then got her in trouble and then got some money back. So all of that happened in a very short amount of time, probably one day. And it seems like a wild ass ride for him. Just be like, I wanted a job and now I'm here in this train, having some money, needing a job, gonna go broke again. Will this repeat? Probably not snake eyes this is a mystery movie all surrounding about this boxing match what happens there's a gunshot and then you get the different perspectives from Cade, hot lady his friend who's a cop the boxer himself and just other perspectives and so that's most of the movie and i was intrigued by it i was like, okay this is interesting let's see where it goes hopefully it doesn't disappoint and it doesn't it's not like you know a disappointing reveal it's more a okay this makes sense type of reveal i like it i'm glad i went through this journey of figuring out who it was and seeing all those patterns seeing same scenes but from different perspectives stuff like that really like that his friend kevin reveals that his gun went off he was trying to go after this guy who was planning an attack he shot that's when all the crowd just freaked out and they're also not allowing anyone to go out which i thought was weird or maybe i forgot the reason as to why oh wait never mind take that back they want to find the killer close the whole building so that they can find the killer that may be hiding throughout this whole like arena but you still have cage being our main character he's a cop he's doing his job and he was here because he's a fan of this boxer he loves him he was betting money on it turns out this guy was gonna lose for money like a lot of money and so through more povs and flashbacks turns out kevin was the one planning all this which was no shock it was just teasing just kind of laid on you being like hey kevin telling like cage get out please don't stop investigating or else you're not gonna like the reveal and so the reveal wasn't surprising it was expected but i still like the journey and the reasoning why was to prevent attacks on the u.s ships that reasoning sure it was okay but again the journey of getting here and the way that the story was told i like this so much that this reveal was like okay you know what it's fine like cage at the end of the day is doing the right thing he's trying to be a good cop and so his friend kevin's like hey you know what protect the u.s ships make money lots of money capitalism in the end they do win cage gets kevin arrested he helps that one lady what's her name i only know her from gerald's game and haunting of hill house i think that's the lady right i think i could be completely wrong either way this is a good movie it's a good mystery and if you don't like the reveal that's fine like the reveal and reason why kevin did this it's fine but the journey of getting there i find was a lot of fun eight millimeter you know what i don't want to say this a lot but eight millimeter this might be my favorite nick cage movie man because this whole movie is about obsession nick cage finds like this film reel and it shows a little girl getting like tortured essentially and he just goes into this rabbit hole of like trying to find out his identity where this clip came from its origin wants to find the killer he's experiencing what we're experiencing seeing all this dirty ass stuff just seeing how some people function in the world and how or why they're doing this and so you have daryl dixon from walking dead he's in this movie Movie as like a janitor for a quick second that was cool Joaquin Phoenix seeing him here was cool he's in the movie a lot more with Cage looking at all these like clips and reels of seeing girls getting tortured and being forced to do stuff and it's horrifying it's gruesome it's excessive and Cage wants to find out why people are doing this he wants to find a reason or attach a reason as to why some people have the tick to do these things and record it very later on I think an agent or a cop stops him being like hey stop you know you're doing good but stop please he's not seeing his wife or kids his colleagues he's like not seeing them 
he's super obsessed and one of them says that maybe this guy just filmed it because he could maybe that's the kink or maybe that's it and that is not enough for him he needs to find a reason as to why people are doing these things why this guy did this to this girl her name's mary ann he goes to her mother to talk about her and how she's essentially given up but also not on about her own daughter about who killed her it went unsolved and so this is cage's mission to do that now because he's become way too obsessed with it he's too deep into this and then when it is revealed that it's this person named george it's both disappointing but also great because cage wanted something to you know correlate to him going after these girls but turns out george just enjoyed doing these things he had a normal life his parents didn't beat him he wasn't traumatized as a kid or whatnot he just enjoyed doing these things and that's the scariest part that anyone could have done this a normal functioning person could actually do this he thought maybe you know traumatized kid got beat by his parents right but no it's just he enjoyed this and that scares cage obviously and so he gets rid of him but by the time he gets home he's in his wife's arm crying because he's so frightened and traumatized by this event this is a good ass movie about obsession finding any type of reasons as to why humans do things and turns out in the end you're gonna get disappointment because sometimes the truth is normal people do this you know like they don't really have to have a bad upbringing or bad childhood they just do these things because they like it for some reason and that is the best part about eight millimeter the frozen ground a little bit mixed on this movie because there are some aspects that i really like nicholas cage being one of them he's just a good character a good person who has a family he has to be careful because he's also looking for this killer who's going after females and then also trying to protect this girl named cindy she's not really in the right mindset of just getting barely out of this whole mess and then going back to the strip club and doing her thing john kosak as the killer is also pretty good his scenes of watching cindy p and then telling her to you know clean it up he has this other girl treats her horribly he's creepy and gross and then that's where it kind of ends my main issue is the dialogue some of that dialogue in this movie is not the best it's fine most of the time and then there's some like scenes of dialogue where it is just not good i don't know who was like this is good cindy can be frustrating at times but she's much more younger she just escaped this like serial killer guy and she's obviously traumatized and so instead of you know getting help or wanting help from age she just goes in the strip club doing her thing doing her job and then that's when she meets him again and it causes this whole like plot of him looking for her because he didn't kill her she's the only one that survived and got out and then in the end it came back full circle where she would come into that interview room and he just freaked out lashes out at her being like i should have killed you which confirms to everyone in that room that he confessed because they need like more evidence they need his hard proof of evidence or him confessing and then everything else was just fine scenes with cage at the station looking at evidence those things are needed because it's a crime thriller movie and then they do commemorate this whole movie to all of the victims that were killed during this real life incident it is based on a real life incident and i just wish that this movie would have been better because once that rolls around i was like oh damn this is actually like a real thing like a killer in alaska killing like females and they show like the real life pictures there's only one survivor cindy and this is her telling her story and so that was a nice moment nice end but the movie itself is okay so we have another movie where i don't really care about it is a disaster movie called left behind cage plays a pilot and while he's in the air on an airplane he meets chad murray from one tree hill and a cinderella story that guy haven't seen him in a long guy's time and so seeing him here was kind of cool you've got his daughter like a daughter i think his daughter and then while that's happening the rest of the world is like having tornadoes and shit flying cars disaster what causes it i don't think the movie says or if they do i couldn't care enough because i'm not really keen on disaster movies they're not for me they don't do it for me honestly they're just kind of they are like 2012 movie and independence day those type of movies don't really care about most of the movie is people freaking the hell out on the ground while that's happening on the airplane people freaking out cage trying to fix things up while trying to land and he does but once they get out they realize the world has gone to shit and there's nothing left really for humans in general and so the movie ends on a very negative dour note which is fine this whole movie's fine kind of felt like a waste of time just watching this movie and guess what we have another movie that is as forgettable as left behind dying of the light this whole movie is about cage trying to kill this other person who is his nemesis he's a cia agent and they were i guess partners or just enemies way back in the day he now has an opportunity to kill him for good because he thought he killed him by now it is the time and he does by the end he kills him and himself both die i don't remember the character's name i don't remember his interactions with his friends or family wait hold on does he even have a family i don't think he does 
does. It looks like a forgettable straight to VOD thriller flick that is thrilling. And then that's it. You know, I don't know what else there is to say about this movie. I do wonder if anyone watches these movies or even like Bruce Willis or old actors that are past their primes and just have movies popping out every year because they're making a lot, I guess. Like, I don't know if anyone sat there and watched all of these because they're not all that interesting is a movie that's actually way more informative than i guess enjoyable i mean the movie is enjoyable and well made but i didn't realize that this was an actual person and i already knew about this this guy he leaked information about the government about how they're watching us through cameras or just yeah i think cameras right just watching a bunch of people without consent and so i was like oh this is kind of cool i didn't realize that they made a movie about it cage is only in it in the first half i think he's a teacher at this classified university i think or somewhere that's nice i don't know where he's a teacher that's just working for what looks like the basement he's like an artist i think i don't know he's there to just inform snowden hey i work here you'll be seeing me and i'm nicholas cage that's really it that's what i got out of it it's not really about him he's a very much a minor supporting character it's about snowden and how he meets a girl which that's the least interesting part that felt like a studio hey we need something or maybe it is the actual story of snowden because again this is like real life events quote unquote most of it's probably true and real but the amount that's like film just fake and fiction probably like 10 percent, but okay sure don't care about that but the him finding out hey there's these things that i realized that people are being watched without consent and he doesn't know what to do about it and so he gets himself other people involved and tells them hey your life will be different if you get involved or if this doesn't go well we're all gonna get assassinated and killed and so for most of the movie he's like kind of freaking out and kind of stressed out hiding all the time traced on the internet with the computers and phones and whatnot and as we all know from the real world from 2018 i think hold on when did this happen i forgot a year but whenever it happened it was all over the news it was on abc news cnn and all the big news outlets and then as the movie starts to end it cuts into the real snowden of him talking about it on stage but behind a computer because he's still in russia or living in russia because he can't go to america i think he's wanted essentially because he would probably be assassinated for just leaking out all this classified information and then yeah as of you know 2022 he's still alive i think though in russia the movie's okay it's fine again i think the movie's more informative this was a big thing and so watching a movie about this guy's life for the most part was informative inconceivable do i like this movie i think i like it i only like one aspect of it and it's katie she's this lady who looks nice who looks approachable as well off right doesn't seem creepy or doesn't seem to latch on to people because she wants something out of them turns out she is that person where she's very too attached to some people because she wants a kid and she wants to be like a mother and she meets Katie and his wife and both of them at first are like you seem nice slowly but surely they're like you seem kind of creepy lady and there's moments where she's just like i don't know in a room doing nothing or just like in her head just like planning shit out because she wants this baby or something like that part's creepy and it's good everything else was just okay seeing katie slowly manipulating like the little girl the mother and cage at one point but i think cage is the one person that's like i see through you can you just get out of our lives and like she doesn't at all she just stays around it's like you should probably go i think you've overstayed your welcome and then she goes yeah sure and then she comes back and back and back eventually lives in a house it's like what katie's trying to destroy the family family from within so try setting up his whole affair with her and cage that doesn't work out in the end which i forgot about what happens in the end i think there's a baby that's born by the wife and then oh yeah never mind i remembered katie goes to prison but in doing so there's like a baby birth and just the trauma that caused cage and his wife was unnecessary and now i will say it all could have been avoided if they just didn't allow her in the house and whatnot and you know she's nice but there's like clear red flags of like her staying around way too damn long and she just gives up these creepy ass looks and vibes and it's like can you please get out just get out please but movie's okay looking glass is a movie about cage and his wife and they want a fresh start they want to you know have a new life after suffering from the loss of their child i believe and they open up a new hotel or motel and that's how they make their living their money they're living there the wife is doing all the money checks and whatnot and then cage is busy snooping around looking at people looking behind this wall or mirror or whatever seeing like i guess murder in a way maybe not murder just seeing the escalation of murder and he's just watching you know it's like what the hell is going on in this movie like him and his wife are clearly stressed 
stressed out, teased that they might not be together by the end of the movie, but that's not the case because they kind of need each other. But what started out as a fresh start turned into a nightmare. Motel started getting in people that were just kind of super suspect, the wrong type of people, you know, murderers. A murder happens and Cage and his wife has to figure it out somehow. They want to call a cop, but they can't because this person keeps coming in, trying to not get them to call the cops and whatnot. That escalates. I believe there was an attempt at a suicide as well, and so they have to take care of that. Cage is still behind that secret mirror, just like, that's cool. And then by the end, both of them have to flee. They have to leave their fresh start because their fresh start turned into a complete nightmare. And so they can't control it no more. They want to move on and start a new fresh start. And based off of, you know, this movie, it seems like that won't go well as well because they keep trying to figure stuff out. And then there's a roadblock, try to fix it, but can't. And it'll probably repeat because they don't seem like problem solvers. There are some things, but like suicide attempt, murder and all that stuff. They're just like, yep, we're out. Starting a new fresh start. And then guess what? That's probably going to suck as well. And then we're ending it on a fantastic movie called Between Worlds. And when I say fantastic, I mean bad because watching this movie, I'm not sure if Cage knows what he's doing because I don't know if he's just super self-aware of himself. And so he's just embracing this meme type of person that he has now, or he doesn't know that. And he's taking this material really seriously, but then just takes it out of the movie. And so I don't know, man. So he's a truck driver in this movie and he just lost his whole family, his wife and daughter. And so life to him is just not the best he saves a woman named julie from this guy in the bathroom and decides to take her with him and meet his daughter billy she's in a coma there's these other characters these other boys that cause this probably and this movie looks cheap like it does not look professional is that the right word like it just does not look good it looks very cheaply made he decides to stay with this girl named julie because both her and billy essentially his second chance at a family where he keeps having these nightmares and dreams about his wife and daughter seeing julie and billy just reminds him of that and be like like, you know what i can become a father i have a second chance that's an issue because the daughter really wants him like badly there's a one scene on a sofa where she decides to touch him just touch him over a blank hiding it from julie and awkward man and keisha doesn't say anything about it eventually this leads to sex and it's like okay he's essentially how old is she if she's underage that's even worse but the whole thing is like the hell are we doing here julie eventually finds out but that would not matter because she dies by the end and then you have more scenes of like cage and billy just just doing stuff you know it's like is this all this movie is and then there's also long periods of time where nothing is just happening or at least i don't find it interesting and so it's just really boring now too it's a combination of is cage really doing this or not does he know the whole daughter billy stuff the forgettable two boys the way that it looks it looks cheap and bad dies by burning and then billy and this other guy they leave or something but then he doesn't scream in agony during sex he does but when he's burning he's super quiet and so like i don't know is he super self-aware like I want to like this movie if he is, but I'm not sure. And then that was it for Nicolas Cage's thriller movies. 10 movies. And so after Red Rock West, Snake Eyes, and 8mm, it just became this downfall of like okay movies. And then eventually ending off with Between Worlds. But this is kind of rough to get through as well. There might have been a bad movie in this, but I'm not sure. So that is it for me. This has been The World So Far. And thank you for watching.